Now, I personally would like to congratulate the Office of Recreation and Sport for, for having this idea, for doing this, for seeing the need and the benefits and for taking action to putting this conference on today. So well done. But also for the 180 people that said yes to coming, thank you, because it's great to have an idea, but to get people on board and make sure you're here. So to start with, a round of applause for both Office of Recreation and Sport and for you all for being here. Now, a little bit about my background. I do know quite a few faces in the room, so some people do know my background, but for the other people that maybe haven't had a chance to read some of the bios about today's conference, um, I am born and bred in South Australia, and I've participated in sport for most of my life. At an elite level for 10 years, I went to three Paralympic Games, two World Champs and a Commonwealth Games, and over that period of time, I won a few medals. Um, and prior to that, I also played netball at a high level. I've also been a scholarship holder at the South Australian Institute of Sport and the Australian Institute of Sport for two different sports, but also two complete different disciplines, from able-bodied sport to also disabled sport. Now, for the people that are sitting there thinking, did she actually say Paralympian? Was that right? Um, yeah, some people sitting there thinking, hang on, is that really the word she said? She looks okay. Maybe she sounds okay. I've seen her walk up and down the stairs. She hasn't got a wheelchair. No missing limbs. Yes, I am a Paralympic athlete. And for the people that don't know my background, I have a very mild case of cerebral palsy on my right side. Something that I was born with, um, but I didn't know what it was. I didn't know it was cerebral palsy until I was 18 years old at the AIS in Canberra on an able-bodied netball, netball scholarship. And uh, that's where my life completely changed. I found out because of having a weakness on my right side or cerebral palsy, I was actually eligible for the Paralympic Games. Probably one of the scariest years of my life, but also the most exciting year of my life because I did make the decision to go to the Paralympic movement. And uh, from that point on, I probably can say that to even the years before that, growing up and looking at society, I was always focused on the inequality for people with disability. You know, for 18 years of my life, I knew I had something wrong, but I didn't know that it was cerebral palsy but because you can't see it, and probably because I could see how society treated people with disability, I thought it was easy just to hide it, to make sure I could fit in. I didn't want to be seen as different because I thought people might not, might not like me. So I worked very hard to make sure that I, uh, I suppose, fitted into what society classed as you know, normal. Um, but for me, uh, that journey of seeing the inequality was something that then I thought for the last 18 years of my life, I could try and help make a difference with. I could try and help educate, educate people that there is a whole variety of different disabilities out there from mild to severe and you know I've spent a lot of time doing it. And probably one of the proudest moments of my life was in London 2012 at the Paralympic Games. Uh, I know there's a few other people in the room that shared this moment with me and uh, after competing in three and then not going to Beijing but I got to go to London as an International Paralympic Committee Ambassador. And to sit in that stadium numerous times, but the first time I sat in that stadium, the athletic stadium, you know, double the size of our beautiful Adelaide Oval, and it was a sellout, absolute sellout. I couldn't even get a ticket. There was no tickets available. And to hear the roar and the passion and the noise, I still get goosebumps telling that story, to know that throughout my journey and through many other people, we actually helped to get some equality for people with a disability around the world. So for me as someone young, I was focused on that inequality and I, I must say I didn't really look at the inequality for gender growing up. However, over the last 14 years, I've been able to improve my knowledge vastly by firstly being a part of the South Australian Women's Trust and then went on to, which I currently still sit on the Premier's Council for Women, just by listening to people's stories, by being part of consultations, and by just seeing the research that out there has really helped me to understand that there is an inequality. Let's take a look at it. What we do know, women are underrepresented in all forms and at all levels of sport. Research shows us that gender diversity is not just fair, but it's good for business. Men are equally as important in the gender diversity agenda. And just for your knowledge today, we have 33% male reputation here, which is fantastic. We did have a goal of 7%, uh, sorry, 40%, sorry, 7% lower, but I do know there's a few extra males on, on the um, AV at the back, video uh, <laughs> photographer. I did ask whether the dog was male, uh, <laughs> but uh, unfortunately female, so we we're getting close. But look, well done, we're nearly there at getting a target of 40%. But to be current, the, st the status quo of sport governance needs to change. 
the sports sector should aspire to 40% target of either gender on their boards. Now these are the key messages for the conference today and they will be explored throughout the day with excellent speakers and panels. Now before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. I'm sure some of you have already been to the toilet, um, but if you don't know where they are, head out the doors and just head straight across to the other side and there's toilets across there. If there is an emergency, we will hear three beeps and uh, don't use the lifts, head down the stairs and head out to where the taxis are and maybe jump in one if you want to. It's <laughs> the evacuation point. Uh, we would ask you to turn your mobile phones to silent now, if you can. If you haven't done it, I'll give you permission to do it now. Um, and behind me, if I can bring up the next slide, um, you will see that we do have Wi-Fi. If anyone doesn't, well, they want to save their own 3G or 4G, um, you can log in to the Wi-Fi for attendees. It's the password and username's up there. And please get involved. Please Twitter. If you've got a few hashtags, tell us about how the day's going. Maybe if you've got any questions, post it. But just get involved in social media. That'll be great. Ben is our photographer here. Give us a wave, Ben. If uh, you would not like your photo taken, if you would love your photo taken, just wave to him anyway and he'll come and take it for you. But if you don't want your photo taken, uh, just let Ben know and he'll make sure that uh, he doesn't today. I'd also like to draw your attention to a couple of things on your table. These coloured sheets of paper you might not have had a chance to see yet, but there's enough on your table for all of you. And what does it say? Pardon? Aha, yeah, aha, this is our aha moments page. So if you have a moment today that you just go, aha, great, that's going to work for my organisation, or you have a learning of something that's new, different, write it down, and, you know, I'd be really happy if even in the middle of something you just went, aha, <laughs> uh, because I know for Rachel and Karen it will give them instant feedback that we are on track and we are making a difference today. So uh, please get, you know, get into that, write down things, because if you don't take notes and, and once you leave here today, we want you to take some action. You've also got these other coloured pieces of paper and enough for you all. This is for our, our board. We have an ideas board, which is just in the back left-hand corner as I'm looking. Uh, just give us a wave back there, okay? So if you have a, an, an aha moment that you'd like to share or something that you would like to ask uh, up on stage or something you'd like to contribute or something that you're going to do because of today, write it on there and pin it up. It can be anonymous, but it'll just give us also feedback to see what people are getting out of today, but you'll give others an idea to see what other people are thinking and, and to share some ideas. So a couple of things there for you. On your table, you'll also spot the Augusta Zaddo uh, scholarship card. If, ha if anyone hasn't received that email yet, the uh, scholarships are currently open. And maybe in your thinking today, uh, there is two scholarships available worth $10,000. I think the nominations close uh, around June. And it's an opportunity for your organisation to think, can we do something to help uh, the work and or the health and safety at work for women? Uh, so have a bit of a look at that. Now, before I open the conference and invite uh, our minister up to do that, I would just like to ask a couple of things of you. I'd ask you to try and suspend your voice of judgment today because it will lead to an open mind. I'd ask you to turn down your voice of cynicism, the disbelief, the disbelief of new possibilities because it will lead to an open heart. And if you can, let go of the voice of fear, the fear of letting go of some of the old things because it will lead to open will and new opportunities. The voice of judgment, the voice of cynicism and the voice of fear can be our leadership blind spots. So if you can today, I challenge you all to try and not let those blind spots get in your way of your own personal leadership, but also that of your organisation. So without further ado, let's get started. And it's now my great pleasure to invite our Minister, Leon Bignall, to uh, the stage, our Minister for Recreation and, and Sport, and delighted that you are once again our Minister for Recreation and Sport. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Minister to open the conference for us. Thanks very much, Katrina, and uh, 